Hello my darlings, let's almost get right into it. This is a Genshin Impact story, hope you enjoy it. And this is the cute anime picture of the day. The cute anime picture of the day is here to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, share the video around and watch it until the end because that is the best way you can indirectly support me as this increases my standing in the YouTube algorithm and I get more views because more people that haven't subscribed yet get my videos in their feed. Please, for the love of God, do that. Like, genuinely. I I have been dropping views rapidly during the past couple of days and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, also, if you want to support me more directly, I have a Patreon and a merch store. Both links are down in the description. And yeah, let's get right into it. Genshin Impact, second attempt. Maybe the last one if this video doesn't take off. Enjoy. My dear Diluc, for how much I have craved the state, I cannot put into words. After years of not knowing your touch, your voice, I will finally depart Shnezhnaya on the 22nd. By the time this letter will arrive, I will sure be already en route. I cannot wait to be with you. Of love. Diluc read this letter countless times since he had received it. Ever since his childhood, he had few wishes. But one of them was to finally meet you. You and him had been pen pals for more than ten years. As a poor child of a noble family in Shnezhnaya, you had decided to randomly send out a letter to one of the addresses in your father's journal, hoping to make a friend. And despite you and him never meeting, it became strangely intimate. Not that you minded that. So when about a month ago, a group of Fatui diplomats arrived, he had been cautious. The Fatui simply wanted a few crates of his wine. And while he wanted to reject them initially, the offer was about four times the usual amount he'd receive as payment. He'd be foolish to decline. And if they didn't pay up, we would have all the more reason to go after Mondstadt's enemy. It seemed like a win-win. And then, your letter arrived. He was surprised. In none of your letters to him had you ever mentioned joining the commonly disliked organization. But it made sense. If you really wanted to visit him, to see him, to be with him, becoming a Fatui was the fastest way. He smirked, thinking about you. Judging by the stories you told him, you always were a head for the war person, preferring hard but fast solutions. He chuckled, just like the Fatui. Right now he sat in his office, hands folded under his chin, tapping with one finger at his lower jaw, thinking. He had sent the traveler on a quest to retrieve a rare flower for him, and they hadn't returned yet. He knew you like flowers. Shneshnaya was a very cold place, so not many plants bloomed there, and the few that did were rarely worthy of a noble woman's attention. No. He had wished the traveler bring him a Cecilia, a perfect one. No missing petals, or the slightest hint of fading. 
Surely this quest would take him a while. However, he hoped desperately the Traveler would return on time. Meanwhile, you were sitting inside your luxurious carriage. You were reading through the final chapters of the spellbook you used as a catalyst. Lass and Yora had insisted you would go with a group of secret mages as your bodyguards. Due to treasure hoarders inhabiting the route she had chosen for you. At least it was the fastest one. Luckily it seemed that the mages were enough to deter any attacks. Domina. A secret mage spoke up. Uh, yes? You said, looking up from your book. We are almost there. The mage grinned. I would get ready if I were you. Trade talks as important as this have the tendency to lead to failure if body and mind aren't fully prepared to take it. You nodded and stowed away your catalyst. Then you took a deep breath. Your heart was almost beating out of your chest. The Fatui didn't know about your ulterior motive of meeting the man you loved. You wondered if you would feel more or less nervous if this was just a business negotiation within enemy territory. So far, you had only traded and negotiated within Shneshnaya. For a long time, you were nothing but a servant and scribe for La Signora. The Harbinger was a cruel leader, but somehow she had taken a liking to you. She had made you her personal handmaid. After all, despite your noble heritage, you were nothing compared to a Harbinger of the Vitui. You yourself had created three theories in your mind as to why she treated you better than anyone else. 1. You were just that likable and cute that even a cold-hearted demon like hers had her heart melt at your side. 2. There was a debt she had with your family and she would give you special treatment until that debt was settled. 3. This was a cruel game and she would betray you at some point. Not because you would be a danger to her, but simply to see you suffer. Regardless, while looking through the carriage windows, you saw the opulent mansion approach. The pride and joy of Mondstadt. The dawn winery. Your heart felt as if stopped beating for a full minute. The nervousness making you almost pass out. This was what your entire life had been building up to. To say your expectations weren't high would be a blatant lie. You adjusted your Fatui mask and clutched your vision. You were a pyro user, just like the look. That connection alone felt very meaningful to you. Even though to him it probably wasn't. And finally the carriage stopped in front of the entrance of the mansion. Four maids were positioned outside the building, awaiting your arrival. You looked outside the window and gulped when the door to the winery opened. A man stepping outside. Hands behind his back. His hair long, red and flowing. He had a gentle smile on his face and wore a black coat that reached down to his thighs. 
that was their look. When he was at an arm's length to the carriage, one of the secret mages opened your door. For a split second, you looked just mild, your perfect form. Before he bowed before you. Milady. He spoke softly. With a smile, you stretched out your right hand for him to take. He gently kissed the back of your hand before taking it. Such a gentleman. It was difficult to contain your childish need to squeak and fall right into his arms. After all this time apart, he led you inside the manor, leaving the mages, maids and carriage behind. His staff and your guards knew what to do while you two went to business inside. If they knew, however, what business, they probably would try to follow you inside so you wouldn't get too distracted. Once finally inside, he sighed deeply. <sighs> How many years has it been, milady? He spoke. More than ten, my prince. He chuckled. <laughs> I'm by no means a prince, but I appreciate that you didn't call me a knight. You smiled. Come, follow me into the dining hall. I've prepared a banquet just for you and me. You placed your left hand over your chest. You didn't have to, you said. But all he gave you in return was a soft chuckle. And then he gently guided you into a room to the left of the entrance hall. It was a modestly decorated room, with a table and two chairs in the middle of it. On the table stood a candelabra with three lit candles. Honestly, when he said dining hall, you expected something bigger. Then again, judging by the size of the manor, there might as well be another dining hall that was. You sit down at the opposite to him. He put a hand under his chin. You look just as beautiful as I imagined. You look sad and you blushed. You were wearing a flowing black and red dress. And by now, you had put your Fatui mask around your neck. And you? You said with a hint of shyness in your voice. You look just as imposing as I thought. That was meant as a compliment. Yet he smiled. And he was about to say something. But a maid interrupted him. My apologies, Master de Luc, but the feast is ready to be served. Ah, thank you, he said, before returning his attention back to you. A Monsterian delicacy will be our meal for today. And my personal favorite. It is called Once Upon a Time in Mondstadt. As if on cue, the maid returned with a large tablet. On it was the deliciously smelling food. After the feast, you and Tim had decided to take a walk outside the Dawn Winery around the large acres of grapes. The sun was already setting making the river next to the property appear like a lake of molten gold. Your lover didn't seem like a very talkative person, but he had already mentioned that in a handful of his letters. So for now, you simply enjoyed his company. I must admit, Master de Luc, you said eventually, and he looked at you. 
when I first laid eyes on you. It was very difficult to hold myself back from immediately jumping you. You looked up into his face. In fact, by now this desire has only gotten stronger. His face turned soft. In all honesty, milady, I feel the same way. It makes me wish that we were simpler folk, where it wouldn't be frowned upon giving in into such uh, primal urges. Are you sure you have never given in to your wild side? He thought for a moment. <laughs> As I said in many of my letters, I'm quite well used in dealing with the local ruffians and hillicherals and abyss mages around Mondstadt. I'm proud of my nation and I will defend it with my life. So when it is threatened, I see no issue in letting go of all inhibition. <laughs> Spoken like a true hero. He chuckled. Honestly, I'd rather be a villain sometimes. Why is that? He asked curiously. The villain always gets the girl. Hearing him say that felt like a challenge. And with a grin, he retorted. Are you sure about this, Master Deluc? He stopped in his tracks, and so did you. And then, he pulled you closer. His hands gently rubbing over your back his crimson eyes looking right into yours. With an almost cheeky grin, he said, Well then, me lady. His tone was seductive. Prove it then. You opened your mouth slightly, as heat began to rise in your chest, and your faces came closer. You parted your lips a little more and felt him washing over like a wave of warmth. You curled your toes, losing all your senses as the taste of him nearly silenced all thoughts. Your whole body tingled. The feeling of his large frame leaning over yours as his hands explored your figure. He pulled you in deeper, claiming your mouth as his until your knees gave in. By the time you had become aware of your fingers, they had already slipped into his coat and under the shirt he wore beneath. His skin was smooth, and radiated a comforting heat. For a moment your lips separated. You needed to say something. But your clouded thoughts were almost instantly washed away when a squeaky voice shouted from somewhere over the winery acres. Paimon State doesn't understand why Master Dilok would want such a boring little flower. Uh, anyways, he must be somewhere around here, just like the maid had said. For the first time since your arrival, Diluc blushed. The traveler's back from his mission, I see. He thought, while biting his lower lip in anger. <laughs>